six o'clock, so let us stand from the flood. All right, good evening, everyone. Welcome to another open board meeting. And uh, we will start with uh, Lisa. Can you call the roll, please? Here. 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 We are all present and accounted for. Okay, at this time, I would like to entertain a motion to enter executive session to consider information regarding the appointment, employment, compensation, discipline, performance, or dismissal of a specific employee or legal counsel for the public body, to discuss student disciplinary cases, to discuss matters relating to placement of individual students in special education programs, and to consider other matters relating to individual students, to discuss collective negotiating matters or deliberations concerning salary schedules for one or more classes of employees, and to discuss pending or probable litigation against, affecting, or on behalf of the public body. So moved. Second. Motion made by Member Gracias, seconded by Member Hardick to enter into executive session. Can we call the roll, please? Yes. 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 We will, the motion passes. We will enter into executive session at 6.02 and return upon completion. And welcome back. Uh, we are re-entering open session at 6.46 p.m. And at this time, I would like to entertain others. Yeah, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there are no amendments. No, okay, great. All right. Um, okay. Then at this time, I would... The first motion from executive session, please. I move that the school board approve the appointment of Ms. Abair Ottman to principal of Andrew Day, I'm sorry, Victor Day Andrew High School, effective July 1st of 2021. Second. Motion made by Member Dalton, seconded by Member Murphy Peterson. To approve the appointment of Amir Offman as the next principal of Andrew High School. Any comments or questions? Okay, let us vote. Yes. 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 I am proud and pleased to say that we have unanimously approved Abir as the next principal of Andrew. Congratulations. Okay, we are, we are. Yes, yes, please come on up. I would like to thank the District 230 Board for this incredible opportunity. I am very honored and humbled to stand here before you as this is a dream come true. Being at Andrew is not a job, it's a way of life for me. I take a lot of pride in serving the Andrew community and cherish the strong relationships that I have with students, parents, teachers, administrators, and all stakeholders. I believe we have an outstanding school that can only continue to be an exemplar for the state of Illinois. I thank you very much. The students are my true passion. I'm going to work diligently for all students, regardless of their background, to provide them equitable learning opportunities. My aim is going to continue to advance the legacy of Andrew High School is that successful, high achieving, family oriented school and to continue that wonderful college culture and climate that we have. I also believe in the strength of, of our staff and know that collectively we can surpass and achieve any goals that we set together. 
I will continue to lead with my heart and soul every single day to make sure I enhance those around me. And as we work through all challenges, I'm going to embrace collectively with everyone. We will bring all stakeholders together. And as a firm believer of the District 234 values, I look forward to this wonderful opportunity and I thank the board again. Thank you so much. Congratulations to you guys. Hey, we look forward to working with you up here. We know that uh, you and our other other two great uh, principals will uh, continue to have a very strong team here in, the, uh, in our district. Okay, and uh, at this time we will move on and I would ask for a motion to approve the consent agenda. I move that the school board approve the consent agenda. Second. A motion made by member Murphy Peterson, seconded by member Gracias to approve the consent agenda. Do we have any comments or any questions? Okay. Ready, Lisa? Take your time. All right. Let's vote. Yes. 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 That agenda passes. Okay. Do we have any old business? Sure. Okay. The next we will go to our board committees and uh, first pack education. All right, thank you, Mr. President. We uh, at Ed Committee are on a roll. We had a terrific meeting again uh, back on December 1st, because it was a couple weeks ago, it's still fresh on the brain. Um, so each of the principals uh, went over their school improvement plan, which um, kind of the theme there was changing from such a big focus on remote learning and now getting back into more traditional goals. Uh, in particular, uh, equity was one of the main themes from all the buildings and um, collaboration and, and working together to uh, you know, get through this with everybody. Um, at Andrew, they talked about um, remote learning ideas and, and best practices for instructional staff and keeping the kids on, on track. Um, again, they talked about equity and, and professional development and um, there are ways of rareness and, and kind of pivot a little more towards social justice and diversity. Um, Sandberg, uh, Dr. Tyrell talked about the student report card, which is a really neat thing. Um, if you want to know about, uh, more about that, let us know. But it's essentially showing where each student is uh, for the class of 23, uh, where they're at in terms of their grades, in terms of extracurricular activities, and things that go on to make a successful student. So that project started last year, it's coming along good. It's a really, really neat thing um, that, that Sandberg's doing over there, it's a little different. And then over at STAG, uh, we talked a lot about empathy and um, in the environment at school, um, and uh, you know, talk more about you know, how, to, how to teach and how to learn more in a, in a remote and hybrid uh, environment. Uh, Dr. Data, Don Ruder Cox was at our meeting. We talked about our school report cards. And one of the interesting things is because we didn't have a lot of assessments last year, there wasn't a lot of new data. So uh, a lot of the data from the year before uh, was put into this year's school report card. So those really haven't changed much. Um, we do have a 96% graduation rate and a 96% teacher retention rate, which is very successful, excited about that. Um, under our curriculum and instruction update, uh, we talked about the career day uh, that we have every year. This year, it was remote career day. Uh, it was uh, done, I think, the day after our meeting. So we met the night before uh, our remote um, virtual career day. So Dr. Gonzalez talked a lot about what, how, what that was going to look like and all the panelists and all the, the tracks that each of the students can go to. Uh, and we're looking forward to feedback at our next meeting to see how that went because again, it was remote. Um, but they took us through um, kind of, if you were a student, which which subject content you would go to. There's three different sessions for each time frame. Um, so we kind of got a virtual visit overview of, of what career day is going to look like. So 
again, I think kind of we did the best we did with what we got. Um, we worked a lot with a new program called NEPRIS, uh, which is really kind of our more our new career cruising uh, platform. And they also did the career day. So that worked out well. I'd asked uh, Dr. Um, Dreyer to do a proposal on NEPRIS, not realizing they were heavily involved in career day. So it all kind of fit in together real well. So that was, that was neat. So um, that's pretty much it. A uh, quick overview there. Um, and the last thing that's not in the minutes that we did talk about was the assessments. We talked a lot about, you know, education are big things of student growth. How do we measure that? We've talked a lot in the last couple of years how we switched from ACT to SAT based on the state, you know, mandates. And the class of 2021, the seniors, just took their SAT that normally given in the spring, like March or April. They got it uh, back in October, I think it was. The class of 2022, the current juniors, did not take the SAT 910. So they took it, the SAT 910 as ninth graders. They're supposed to take the SAT 10 and 10th grade. That was canceled. Now they're, they're staying on track. They're gonna do the SAT regular junior year uh, in the spring, like it typically does. So they missed that assessment. They skipped over that SAT 910, the second year of it. Um, and then class of 2023, you know, their sophomores now, they didn't take anything last year. They're going to take the SAT 910 this spring as well. So we're going to have kind of a gap in data, and that's going to be interesting to see what that looks like. Um, but looking really forward in a few months to see how our test scores do, you know, with this remote learning and hybrid learning and see how the impact was there. So um, talked a lot about that and a couple policies for review, and, and that was that. So our next meeting is scheduled for January. Typically, uh, we don't come in January, so I'll keep it posted on when the next meeting actually, but right now, technically, it's January 4th. Any any questions, comments, or concerns? Okay, thank you, Pat. Thank you. All right. Actually, a very, very good meeting. So, oh, on a roll. Student Services, Melissa. Yes, hi. I will try to give an overview because it was a there was a lot to unpack in our meeting. Um, we started off with our step coordinator, Mary Evelyn Schaefer, and she provided us information on our step program. The step program helps individuals with disabilities gain employment after high school. So it's a program that we've implemented, and we have 93 current students are being serviced by our step program, and it's going very well. All three principals gave us uh, building school improvement and equity plans um, at uh, Andrew High School, um, along with um, training staff on uh, equity uh, goals and uh, uh, different uh, uh, plans to help improve equity for all students. The school has also been delivering food to the families in need in that area. Uh, Dr. Nolting uh, stated that eight equity town halls have been implemented just this semester, even with our trying COVID time. He also stated that the school is in, in process of training 13 new staff members. So um, even with hybrid and all of the challenges, we are still focused on our diversity and equity in all three buildings. Um, next, we heard from SAG, from Mr. Olson. Um, SAG has also been delivering food to those families in need during the 2.30 adaptive pause. The PBS staff created a website for staff and students with helpful tips and resources for dealing with the pandemic. The students are able to sign up virtually for social emotional support. This website has gone off so well that the district has decided to adopt the website and put it onto the district website. And so if you have a chance to check it out, I, I highly recommend it. It's very interesting, very well done by one of our SAG teachers. Mr. Olson also stated that SAG believes that equity benefits all students. All students have completed an equity survey to this date. Students and their parents will receive it as well. And the goal of Amos Lazo say is to foster an environment that ensures all voices are heard. Then um, uh, Dr. Dreyer added, oh, I already told you that the district's gonna put that on their district uh, website. And let's see. 
Oh, also, uh, administrative assistant uh, Trish, Trish Bullock, Bullock informed the committee that the uh, instructional services department has been gathering items for coping bags. Those work in conjunction with this website. For students that, who have had prior or current mental health concerns, the hope is that the bag will help our students get through this tough time and to remind our kids how much we care for them. Some items that will be included in the bag are journals, colored pencils, stress balls, different activities to help them center themselves. So it, you know, we really are trying to work to help all kids in our area. Now over at Carl Sandberg, Jen Tyrell spoke to the committee about the Carl Sandberg scorecard that was implemented two years ago and how it is, it's the way of tracking for student success because as Patrick said, with the data having some gaps now, it's been a bit of a challenge, but the scorecard has been very, very helpful and they are continuing, continuing to use it. Action plans have been developed to support and to support the students and decrease any achievement gaps with our low income students. Then um, we had a presentation by Dr. Dreyer about our new, uh, our, our new title, what is it, title, title, nine. Nine. title, nine. title, nine. title nine, new rules and regulations. And that's just procedural, but it's, uh, it still needs to be discussed in my committee. So we went through that. And then um, we also had a presentation by Dr. Dreyer about reading and dyslexia. And it, uh, usually dyslexia is diagnosed in the elementary level, but she went on to state how high schools still support kids with dyslexia or reading um, limitations. And then we also heard from our special education director, Lisa Schulman, on the clear residency system and how we track to make sure that all the kids and families registered in our district actually live in our district and should be going to our school. And then lastly, we also ended it with some policy reviews and our next meeting is scheduled for January. At this point, it's January 12th, but we'll get back to you to make sure that it's a certain date. Right. All right, any Thank comments you. or questions? Actually, meeting. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I continue to steal your thunder. My report book. I'm sorry about that. All right, and it's now uh, the land and finance. Soup. Good evening. We held our building and finance committee on December 7th, and um, we started off our meeting with the enrollment projections. These projections, projections are used uh, for budgeting, financial projections, attendance and faculty planning. Um, we then reviewed the 2020 tax levy, uh, which we did review at our last meeting. Uh, so there was no changes. And the tax levy for 2020, that represents a 3.20 increase over 2019 tax extension. Um, we already we approved this on our consent agenda tonight. We talked about the workers' compensation insurance renewal. We had um, marketed this to nine carriers on the renewal of um, one two I P R S for the 2021 year for three thousand. I'm sorry, three thousand would be lovely. Um, three hundred eleven thousand eight hundred twenty-seven dollars. Um, we also received uh, a grant, a safety grant from our workers' comp companies and projected that would be around $11,500. Um, and that is uh, items that, uh, or that money goes to items that we use to ensure the safety in our building, like uh, entrance masks and so forth. So um, that gets used accordingly. We also, on our consent agenda, uh, approved the property casualty and liability insurance renewal. And 230 has been insured with Bright Specialty since 2011. But due to the changing market conditions, uh, we were able to be offered a competitive renewal this year, and we are going with Liberty Mutual. Um, we increased, we increased uh, our cyber liability coverage as well, and that's 
uh, bid was for $385,575. And we also included a terrorism coverage of $11,038. Dr. Gay shared with us the uh, state legislation, and um, he will speak about that in a little bit. Uh, there is no transportation uh, issues to cover. And the proceeding, uh, I actually skipped over his part. He always starts this out, and I apologize for that. Uh, he will be sharing with us the current projects that are going on in the district, which is the uh, first phase of our solar project, the second phase of our roof project, the status of our varsity baseball field at Stanford, and the um, paving project at the Andrew High School varsity baseball field, along with an elevator project for the two oldest elevators in the district. Uh, these are the last two that we would need to replace. Um, We've been doing them uh, through our process, so those are the last two. And we're also looking at some HVAC uh, upgrades. Mr. LaVelle shared with us our financial report. He will also be sharing that with us tonight. And we talked about um, our sports bid, which we approved in our consent agenda, which was uh, considerably less than what it has been, seeing that we've not been utilizing what we purchased in the last year. So um, that bid was $12,643, uh, almost half of what we typically purchase. And then we discussed the situation of substitute pay increases. Um, all school districts are struggling to make sure that uh, they're getting substitutes into the buildings when needed. And we want to be competitive with the districts surrounding us. So we are going to um, increase our substitute rate to 100. We're going to consider increasing our rate to $140 per day, and that will take place in the next semester and then end. So we're just doing it from January of 2021 to June of 2021, and then our rate should go back to what we have already. And then we just reviewed some of our policies um, for review and. That was our meeting. Yes, a normal, regular building finance. Yeah. It was, but I was wondering with all that we covered in this between education, student services, and building and finance, we typically in December have a yeah. abbreviated meeting with all of us, and I think that would have been a very long meeting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So you mean, so, mean that event anyway? Um, yeah. Maybe this time will work out sometime. Yeah, you're really right. Any questions for Sue? Okay, thank you. Building, oh, sorry. I do have a question. Yeah. It's to Sue. At the building finance uh, meeting, John LaBelle was explaining to the business end of us getting a provider for cyber security and, and uh, the need for that. And we started asking questions we simply didn't know the answer to. I know John is here today, and I don't want to put John on the spot, but I'm going to. Um, John, there's an advisory, an FBI advisory that came down just a couple of weeks ago, I guess, about the ransomware attacks that, that are happening in all the schools, K through the 12th grade. And I'm just wondering, with us increasing the insurance, getting that additional rider, I trust us we are doing everything we can to try to prevent that from ever happening here. Yes, yeah, yeah, we've got uh, John, John Connolly uh, is going to join us at our next meeting too to, to go over that. But yeah, go ahead, John. Yeah, so absolutely. We've uh, we've actually been on the forefront with a lot of districts with actually sending monthly security drills to our staff. What typically happens is the attack vector for the criminals is our end user. So you get you get tricked into and any of this can happen on our personal accounts. You get tricked into clicking on something, providing your credentials. And then whatever and amount of access you get is where the ransomware or um, any kind of breach scenario can kick off. So what we've done is with those um, monthly security drills is we really keep down our risk footprint because more of our staff is really thinking about is this legit or not. And so since we've been doing that for three years, 
we're, we're up, up to like the, the highest, highest level, level. And in, in some, some cases, cases you know, you know in some, some cases, cases, I'm talking to staff members that, that are contacting me saying, saying like, this is really tough, tough and I'm not happy, happy you sent them to me, but they understand. So if, um, um, if they think we're situated in a good spot there on the technical end, end we do a lot with, with looking at different patches, patches and making sure, sure that, that um, our servers, servers and our endpoints, we're, we're looking at the, the new and improved security that's on there. But as I say all that, I think any organization, any organization can never be 100%, 100%. So we're, we're doing, doing all we can. can. Um, and, and that's one thing that I talked to Dr. Gay and the principals at our leadership meeting often on. Um, and we did, I did share that FBI report from Dr. Gay um, just to show what's going on out there. Great, great, great. Thank you. I would also like to add that I'm really happy to see us double our limits of insurance for that because that market is getting crushed right now from an insurance perspective because they're selling policies now and they don't really understand the full aspect of the of the risk because it's relatively new coverage and a lot of companies are starting to pull out of the marketplace so we may have a capacity issue going forward they not be we may not be able to buy higher limits like we are right now so and there are a lot of claims that are happening that are policy limits so if we buy a million dollars they're blowing through that million dollars in a heartbeat so even two million dollars i mean we can go higher I'm really glad we did this, especially nowadays, because it's a big, hot topic in our industry right now. It's cyber. Yeah. No, you're you're right, Pat. I, I'm kind of involved in the in the purchasing of the insurance at, at the bank I'm at, and um, we've gone. I would say probably three years ago, we started uh, with a small cybersecurity policy, and we probably doubled or tripled that in the last couple of years. Um, and we've really had very few, you know, we've had some incidents with very few, but it's, it, you got to have that protection. Yeah, it's not so much the frequency, but the severity of the claims right. are massive. Well, yeah, I can imagine. So, so it's a smart thing we're doing, and uh, I agree, Pat. We are going to need more next year, unfortunately, but at least we got our feet in water. I well, we can get it. Yep. I started to get correct off the beat. No, it's okay. No, it's great. It's an issue. It's a good one, so I think it's important that we're online. Understand what's going on. Okay, uh, then we will move on to the to comments section. Do we have anybody from the team? Uh, the teachers in ESG, not tonight. We have neither. Okay. Uh, they're on, but they're not, there's no comments. Oh, there's no comments. Okay. All right, then tonight, um, we do have our students uh, on Zoom, and uh, unfortunate that we once again cannot have you here with us, but we are so glad you're able to join us on Zoom. And uh, I, who's going to go first? How are we going to make that decision? Since you're all on Zoom. All right, let's see. I'm going to pick. I think they think they did it. Oh, you did. <laughs> Okay, then who's ever first? Go ahead, ladies. Good evening, everyone. It is great to see you all again, and I hope you're all having an excellent night. Since I unfortunately will be unable to see you all beforehand, I would like to wish everyone a happy holiday season and a happy new year. December has been an exciting and festive month for Samberg. As you know, on December 2nd, we held our virtual career day for all students. Students had the opportunity of choosing three career topics they would be most interested in listening to. They then gained information about these careers, hopefully widening their knowledge on career paths and opportunities. My classmates and I found it very inform informational in that we were exposed to a handful of career choices that were unheard of before. To continue, Sandberg is proud to announce that we have wrapped up our recording for our fall, for all, our fall play. Students and staff strictly followed safety precautions by having students film in separate rooms. The play is titled 10 Ways to Survive Life in a Quarantine. It takes place over a Zoom call and goes through different experiences each of the people face as they find ways to adapt to this new life. Students and Dr. Tyrell even recreated the iconic last scene of the movie, The Breakfast Club, on the football field as the closing for the play. We hope students and parents greatly appreciate the time and effort that was put into it all. Student Council has been on a roll this month. This Friday on December 18th, Student Council will be hosting a school-wide game of trivia. The questions are set up to be winter and holiday themed to get students into the holiday spirit. 
We are confident that we will have a great turnout and are even handing out prizes to the top three winners. Student Council has also set up a food drive for this month. Students had the opportunity to participate in this event by dropping off food to one of our leaders, Ms. Schaff. We are thrilled by all the food that we have received and we thank all of our students for helping out in any way they could. Stanberg students have also collected over a thousand scarves, mittens, and glove sets that were donated to the Orland Park Food Pantry, a Midlothian school, and a homeless shelter in Chicago. In addition, students participated in the following service projects making holiday cards for veterans in Mantino, senior citizens at St. Julie's Church, and to contribute to the village of Tinley Park's collection for active military men and women. They have also participated in the Clean Out Your Closet clothing food drive to support Goodwill, Savers, and St. Vincent de Paul, and a food drive for the Orland Park Food Pantry. Mr. Gardner is currently working on a menu of service opportunities to share with students prior to winter break so that they can spend their time to positively impact and serve others. When it comes to the holidays, Sandberg goes all out. This week on December 14th and 17th, we safely distributed hot chocolate to all students during their lunch hours. Many students rejoice at the fact that we were able to keep this tradition alive, especially through these tough times. To keep the festivities going, next Monday and Tuesday, Sandberg is holding an ugly sweater contest. This contest is open to all remote and hybrid students and staff make sure everyone feels included. We aim to see as many students arrive in their warm, yet ugly holiday sweaters. May the contest begin. Also next week, we'll be holding a holiday cookie raffle. Stanberg will be raffling off the cookies each period to remote and hybrid right. We are excited that our competitive activities are able to compete virtually. We would love to give a huge congratulations to our outstanding speech team on a recent successful tournament. We would like to give a special shout out to our first, our three first place winners. Congratulations, Grace Cicerelli and Hannah Blair for winning first place for dramatic duet acting. And the last congratulations to Noor Mohammed in achieving first place for improv acting. Also a shout out to our scholastic bowl team that is ranked the top 50 in the country. We love seeing students represent what it truly means to be As this semester comes to close, students and teachers are working together in support of a strong finish to the semester. On behalf of all the students at Carl Sandberg High School, I would like to thank all of our teachers, staff, administrators, and board members for the efforts in making the semester the best it possibly could for our students. We appreciate all the efforts that have been taken to ensure a safe environment for in-person students, quality learning for hybrid and remote students, and connectedness opportunities for all. Thank you all for your time, and I hope you have a wonderful rest of your evening. It has been a pleasure once again to see you all, even if it is virtually. I look forward, I look forward to seeing you all next month. On 2021, and go Eagles. All right, who's next? Good evening, everyone. Um, let me see. Okay. I'm excited to share updates and accomplishments from STAG over the last month. In November, before Thanksgiving break, STAG High School held its annual staff Thanksgiving turkey giveaway. Every period, the sounds of turkey filled the hallways as the staff winner was announced. Although the staff received turkey to bring home, students in their classes of the winners felt like the whole class had won. Our staff was also treated to donuts in the morning from the Doe Skies food truck. It was a lot of fun for everyone. Our co-curriculars continue to find ways to keep students engaged and involved, whether we are on campus or remote. On Thursday, November 19th, just before the increased mitigation efforts in the state began, our orchestras performed and recorded their annual show. It was a beautiful performance that featured students, student choreographed and dance numbers. Orchestras has a long tradition of honoring their seniors at their last show, and this year was no exception. Our seniors held, had, a great, had a moving dance, received send-off wishes from our juniors, and saw a slideshow of all their achievements in dance during their time at STAG, and even all the way back to some of their first preschool dance classes. Orchestras would like to thank the STAG drama crew for their help backstage. For the first time ever, all STAG chargers got to view the entire performance by having access to the video of the show created and shared. STAG's powerlifting club had their first meeting this month. 
Over 40 students had participated in the first few meetings and more continues to join. This club gives our students the chance to, be, to become physically and mentally strong while connecting with charges of all grades and ability levels. Our girls team had, has won state before and we look forward to continued success with the whole program. SAG's Winter Guard has been very busy the last month. Whenever possible, they have been on campus to learn and practice new routines. Although they will not be traveling to state in the Midwest like years prior this winter, they will have the opportunity to record, to record their routine and share with the other guard clubs and judges for feedback. Just a few days ago, we were so proud to induct 104 new members to our National Honor Society. These students demonstrated excellence in their academics, character, service to the community, and involvement in school during the first two or three years at STAG. Speeches were recorded from our student executive board, Dr. Gay, Mr. Olson, and student selected staff member, Mr. Wendelin. Each student who wanted to was able to participate in our induction ceremony. All parts of the ceremony were filmed and we were excited to share the video with our entire STAG community soon. Every year, Stag's Drama Club performs the Christmas Carol in early December and students and staff alike anxiously awaited the release of this year's performance on video last Friday. I have been seeing the show since I was in eighth grade and thought that this year was just as great as the others and I've seen it. I'd like to thank the Drama Club for demonstrating that the show must go on and keeping the tradition going for all of us to enjoy. We are wrapping up the last few days before winter break begins and, and, and because and everyone can use some cheer. So student council created a theme week that started this Tuesday and will continue until December 22nd. We are celebrating all things winter and holiday. We know this time can be a challenge with final assessments and tests. So hopefully this brings some joy and connection. Our students and staff will also have fun surprises next Monday as we celebrate our very first Charger Day of Cheer. Be watching Twitter for some festive outfits, holiday, cozy holiday jammies and treats all day. Theme Wednesdays are a great way for students who are all doing all virtual and hybrid learning to participate in school activities and have some fun as we count on the days until winter break. While winter sports have been put on a pause by the IHSA following the governor's mitigations, our teams are working hard virtually until the pause is lifted. The boys swim and dive team have been meeting every day to do deck workouts and some yoga. Girls bowling practice twice a week virtually, and they also hold a strength training program specifically designed for them by our athletic trainers. Girls basketball meets twice a day for wellness checks. Boys basketball follows a specific plan using the at-home app that was purchased and subscriptions given to any student athlete interested in being part of the team. This app contains basketball, ball handling, and shooting workouts, along with some agility workouts that are used to track and compete against each other. Badminton has been moved to the winter season by the IHSA and our coaches are quickly working to roll out, the roll out their information. We are all very hopeful that come January, our winter teams will be meeting in person on campus. At the beginning of this month, the district held a D230 virtual career fair where I was a student moderator. Um, while I was a little nervous, everything worked out at the end and it was a great learning opportunity for many of our students in the district. A lot of time and effort was put into the event and I'd like to thank Dr. Gonzalez and her committee for putting this together. Learning more about the experiences of professionals in the field that we may be interested in assists all of us as we plan for our next steps after high school or even as we consider classes to take next year. We recognize that, not, we recognize that there has never been a more important time for SAG to be an active part of supporting our students and the entire school community. The Charger Spirit is giving the charger spirit of and giving is endless. A few weeks ago, Stag's food service staff bagged and organized two weeks of lunches for over 160 students. As students, we appreciate the effort that goes into making sure that we are all fed. Thank you to the PPS um, staff who made personal deliveries of the food as well as mental health care packages to, of, to students' homes. We appreciate all who were involved in ensuring that our chargers are doing well. Stag's students also showed kindness and generosity through a variety of service projects this month. First, they created hundreds of ornaments to decorate the trees at the Payless Community Hospital. The trees looked so festive and several Payless Hospital staff members have reached out to let us know how nice it was to have some holiday spirit at a tough time. Also, our students flooded the service learning, uh, the service learning office with scarves, hats, gloves, and mittens to be shared with 
those in the most need to keep them warm through the Chicago winter. Our students are always looking for ways to help their community and are happy to assist however needed. Let's finish 2020 off strong and with a positive note. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. I'm excited to be speaking to you all again. I was disappointed when I found out I would not be presenting at the last meeting, but I am glad to be back virtually. This December looks different than last December, but there's still a lot going on to keep Andrew students busy. To begin, I would like to update you on student council's events. We wrapped up the veterans donation drive. Everyone who donated was so generous and it is great to give back, especially giving our, given our circumstances this year. We also adopted kids to give Christmas gifts to. This is one of my favorite things we do. We buy gifts for kids and donate them to Together We Cope. Again, it is great to give back. Along with this, we also held a holiday party. We had a Google Meet where we played a few games and made some ornaments. It was great and, it, and definitely got people in the holiday spirit. Speaking of the holiday spirit, while walking around VJA, you might spot a green table with some candy canes and a special guest. Every day, a Buddy the Elf inflatable is in different locations of the school. It has been a mission for students and staff in the building to find Buddy and take a picture with him. It is fun walking around and trying to find him. And I also look forward to the pictures on Twitter that get posted once someone finds him. This adds some fun and excitement because who doesn't love Elf? Girls Volleyball participated in the IHSA TikTok Challenge. They competed against three different schools in one. The, ob the objective was to show the most holiday spirit while accumulating the most votes. Not surprisingly, the Andrew community came through for this win. Half of the team's winnings will be donated to St. Jude Research Hospital. A few student leaders were invited to the IDSA Leadership Conference to re represent Andrew. I had been invited to this conference at Lake Zurich in the, in the years past, but this year I attended it virtually. The guest speaker was great and a lot of insightful feedback was given. It was interesting to see exactly what other schools are doing during these times to keep people involved and it ended up being a great event. I was honored to be invited. Although winter sports are postponed, our chess team is doing remarkably well. They were on week eight of their season and have only lost one match. It is awesome to be able to follow their success and I'm excited to see how far they go. With this semester coming to a close, I would like to thank our school board, superintendent and principals for your hard work. Students understand how much, how much everyone has put into this year and while it is definitely not ideal, it has been quite successful. I hope next semester brings us a few things, a vaccine, a graduation and a great end to a great year. Let's see where next semester takes us. Thank you for all, all for listening. Have a great winter break and congratulations to Dr. Offman on becoming the next principal of Andrew. Thank you. I'd kind of like to mention, regardless of the situation we're in with hybrid and remote, the amount of service learning they're still doing, the amount of outreach they're giving to the people in need, other than themselves, so reaching out to the community far and wide. I think that's just a testament to the building. What struck, what struck out to me is all these reports are pretty long, which means there's a lot going on. Right. So everyone's being really creative and trying to you know, get things to, to do with it. They're doing a terrific job. So that's great. Ladies, thank you very much. And obviously, we'd all much rather have you here, but it's it's nice to see you without the mask on. Yeah. Because I, I think this is the first time we've seen you all without yeah. your mask. So it, it, it's great to see you. And hopefully, uh, we will see you. Uh, with us in January, and uh, you know, this just gives you another month not to meet your old friends. Yes, yes, we'll, so we'll, we'll, we'll meet soon. It's eventually, I can't wait for the reunion. Yeah, uh, but ladies, good luck on your finals and have a wonderful uh holiday. And uh, like I said, hopefully, we'll see you in person in January. And let us all hope that we can have an in person graduation, that, that is our goal. And, Hopefully we can get there. So thank you again. Thank you again. Okay. All right. Do we have any public comments? No, sir. Okay. Yeah, we on to business action, and I think that will bring Mr. Lavelle. Uh, I'll make it too fast. So the first item is the tax levy. Correct. Yes. Last month, uh, tentative levy was brought to uh, Building and Finance, and then to the Board of Education. Um, uh, this is uh, no different than the one that was brought to you in tentative form. Um, so uh, we're, we're required 
um, to file our levy and adopt it, uh, adopt it and file it by uh, the last Tuesday in December, which is December 29th. Um, uh, pending the board's approval of this, I, you know, that's what our, our intent would be to get that done then um, yet this week, uh, mm -hmm. if possible. So we can get that out of the way and uh, get, get that filed for the year. So <clears throat> you've got a copy of uh, the paper paperwork in your file that it's going to require signature. Uh, it's in the signature file. Um, and uh, it, it reflects a 3.2% increase over the 2019 levy extension, as Sue mentioned in our uh, in her report about our building and finance committee meeting. Okay. All right, John, thank you. So at this time, I'd like to entertain a motion regarding the 2020 tech. I move that the school board adopt the resolution providing for a tax levy for 2020 that represents a 3.2% increase over the 2019 levy extension. Second. Okay, motion made by member Murphy yeah. Peterson, seconded mm -hmm. by member Gracias to approve the 2020 tax levy. Any comments or questions? Okay, then let's vote. Yes. 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 Motion passes. Okay, John, substitute pay increase. Uh, yes. Yeah. Um, we we discussed this as a cabinet uh, a couple of weeks ago, and um, we we brought it to building and finance this month. Um, Dr. Gay had conducted a simple poll of some area schools. Um, got, you know, got some information related to uh, the, the rates um, ranging anywhere from $110, um, which is where we're at, to $170 a day. Um, we, uh, you know, note in the memo uh, a couple of, um, you know, concerns and reasons, I think, for, for bringing this uh, to you. Um, uh, you know, Dr. Wheaton had, you know, had mentioned um, she was hearing from a few candidates that they were going elsewhere because the rate was higher and, you know, nothing personal, but they just wanted, uh, you know, to make as much as they could. And, and so, um, you know, while this might not increase our pool, uh, it certainly will help to maintain our existing pool of candidates that, uh, that help us out in substitute teaching in our classrooms. And a um, couple other points that uh, Dr. Wheaton pointed out, one of which is, um, you know, without, without labor, we, we can't conduct class. You know, without coverage, we can't have class. So, I mean, it's, it's a pretty serious situation. It's a national issue. Um, you know, another point that was made um, had to do with, um, the fact that um, what was it the you know this would be a temporary rate increase um, just to cover us through the end of the school year where it would be reevaluated at the end of the year so that would be something we would stress in rolling this out if approved by the board um, would be that this is a temporary um, temporary situation and a temporary rate increase and uh, that that's the report. What uh, do do, we, do any of you have any questions related to? The sunset with the semester. So it's sunset with the second semester. We go back to the regular one. If the board like to, would like to look at that in July or August, that's what they can do. But it goes back to the sunset. It goes back to unless the board acts differently next school year. And they declare in every. Uh, documentation or every advertising would say temporary to date. It's just the uh, as John said, um, it is it is a situation if you go around driving around, you see some districts have signs on their office saying it's temporary. So this is a this is a not just a region, it's a state. That's why I'm sorry, John, for being here. So at this time, can I get a motion, please? I move that the school board increase the substitute rates of pay from $110 for external substitutes and $125 for retired and 30 staff 
who are willing to return in some of the district to a flat increase for both categories to $140, effective January 1, 2021, through the end of the regular school year 2021. Second. Okay, motion made by Member Gracias, seconded by Member Honor to uh, approve the substitute pay increase. Do we have any comments or questions? The, the only other comment I'll make on this too is that um, the other issue here is that if, as John said, we don't have a substitute from outside to cover a class, we, we then try to get a teacher currently in the school to cover that class. We actually end up paying them more. So from a financial standpoint, this actually helps us, um, even though we do have to increase it. So it does just work out better. So um, any other questions or comments? Okay, then let's vote. Yes. 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 Yeah. Yes. 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 The motion passes. Okay. Now for informational, John, enrollment projections. Yep. And in, in your package, you'll find our uh, annual enrollment projection. Um, nothing uh, stood out as a major concern um, related to the to the projection. Um, you know, we see a slight increase um, over the next couple of years at STAG, um, some offsetting um, populations at the other buildings, but nothing, nothing um, dramatic. Okay, any questions for John? Yeah. Oh, well, okay. No, I just think it's interesting that, you know, we have this ebb and flow in the district. I mean, we were up to 9,000 students about a decade ago. And I think we're kind of getting to that trough. So I would expect these numbers starting in 27, 28, just going back about this is regeneration and whatnot. So it's always very interesting to see these. And, you know, we do a good job of, of well, the, the staff does a good job of, of projecting. We're pretty close usually, but, um, you know, the next five years down 100 students, that's like 10 students a class at each school or 120 students. So not too bad, it's kind of leveling off, but if you watch the next few years, that's probably going to start turning upwards. It just happens. Yeah, and, and I, think I, we're at, I think we're at our lowest point now. And I think you're right, Pat. And, and I actually went into the building of finance and that. One thing I've noted is uh, and where I live, you know, we, we've all been there for 25, 30 years. Everybody's admits are growing and they've all left. And all of a sudden now, houses are starting to be sold and the new people are coming in with kids. So it's exactly. just a matter of time before everything starts going back up. So and it's a little bit different in each part of the district oh, yeah. too. I mean, the north side it tends to be on a little bit different track than the middle and the south end of the district. But I mean, Stag was growing for the longest time when Andrew was really plummeting. Sammer is going down, and now you can be projected Andrew start to build up again. Stag slowing it's it, it, Sammer in particular as well. So I do think it's always interesting. Very prudent on the board a number of years ago making some of those changes. Well, next, um, we have, I'm going to introduce Dave Keating, who, as I shared with you before, we have a video to show all three buildings uh, we saw. We've added the buildings separately into the planning committee to kind of put it together. And I'm just showing time to talk to Dave. Sorry, Dave. Good hey, evening, everybody. How are you? Good evening. I was going to give a quick update on some construction projects because we actually do have construction going on at uh, Sandberg right now with the baseball field. So uh, excited to say that the main drain is uh, almost completely installed. All the underground work, uh, they're, they're moving right along with this. We've had a really good break in the weather and uh, Hoppy Construction has been doing a really good job of uh, getting as far into this as they possibly can before the weather turns. Um, we're going to be able to use some of the existing dirt that we're pulling out of the field to level some uh, low areas in other parts of the school, which is a good way to save us some money. So that, that's working out nice too. Uh, we had a meeting on the solar project. The, uh, the engineers are working into uh, trying to change a little bit of the drawings to uh, save the district money. Uh, one of the alternates was uh, removing the panels from the, one of the roofs. So they're still working on the drawings and getting that all finalized to hopefully 
say the district as much as we can on the different types of uh, options they're giving us. It's been, it was a really good meeting. Um, as far as the elevators, that's, uh, that's not gonna start till summer, but all the equipment has been ordered. So that's on track. Uh, the pool renovations uh, mm -hmm. for the concrete walls, the engineers are still working on that for Sandberg's pool filter room. And the varsity baseball field, uh, they repaved around Andrew. They were able to get all that completed before the uh, weather turned for the asphalt too. So it, we're, everything's going very well with our projects. Um, it's nice for building and finance to be able to do the touring of the schools and seeing all the summer projects, but this year we couldn't do that. So um, the digital media, media coordinator for the district, Reese McIntyre, put together these videos that Dr. Gabe was talking about and it does a really nice job of uh, showing all the construction we had done. It does a good job of showing all the, the, the updates to the school we had for throughout the year. So um, it's nice that we'll be able to share it with all the, usually we can't share it, but now we have videos of all of it. Now everyone can see it. I'm, I'm looking forward to everyone to see all these, so. <laughs> there you go. There they are. Hi everyone and welcome virtually. I am super thrilled that we still get an opportunity to what happened, Jeff? that we're done this summer. I'll share with you, I am sad that we can't do this in person, uh, but certainly it is the nature of the times. And if there's one thing or one of the things that's really been a silver lining of COVID is our building has never looked better. So you're gonna see some of those capital projects which certainly our partnership effort between our Board of Education, the Building and Finance Committee, um, our ABM staff and all of us. So we're really thrilled about those projects, but we're also just really proud of how the building looks in, in general. So enjoy. Hi there, Sean Arola, Division Chair for PE Health and Driver at Carl Sandbrook High School. I wanna to talk to you a little bit about some of the summer projects that happened, including our new turf, new track, new stadium look with a new ticket booth. So this helps our school community, our athletic programs, and our physical education classes. Almost every class, every hour, based on the weather, if it's not raining, we're out there using this facility. It's a beautiful place. The graphics have changed. The Eagle Head logo looks new. The numbers are, are popping off the turf, um, and everything looks, looks spectacular right now. The new ticket booth allows students and families easier access into the stadium for our football games, soccer games, and lacrosse activities. Our fitness center ended up getting some upgrades this past summer. We ended up adding six new power racks, which will help our, our athletic programs, our community, and our student population and physical education classes. I love our fitness center. It's a multi-million dollar facility where it benefits all kids and all people in health and wellness across our community. Our final upgrade happened in our blue gym, which happens to be our adventure education program. We ended up adding platforms for our high ropes courses, as well as elements. That's gonna help our students learn different techniques as it relates to climbing. My name is Randy Kinsare, building manager at Carl Sandberg High School to talk about three projects that we did this summer. One, we did the uh, roofs, the 2000 roofs, we put, which was put on the East building. It's a new style built up roof. First, they went ahead and fixed our weeks then they went ahead and put up this new white film that reduces um, heat loss to the building. Second, we went ahead and upgraded all the lights in the classrooms and some hallways with LEDs. The, the, in the classrooms, the teachers want to have uh, three options for their classrooms. One is uh, off in front where the projectors are. Two is at uh, about 40%, and the other one is at full, full power. The, um, and they also uh, have sensors in the hallways, so after a certain amount of time, the hallway lights will go off, except for the night lights. And then as you walk down the hallway, the lights will, will turn on, which saves us a lot of energy. Also in the classrooms, the same thing. After about 20 minutes, if there's no movement in the classrooms, the lights will automatically turn off and, and can be re-energized by waving your hand or going back to the switch and turning them on. The ionizers, in the south building, majority of the south building has split units. All the classrooms in the south building with the fresh air makeup units have ionized systems in those which clean the uh, fresh air coming into the buildings. The commons, the grill, the media center, the dean's office, and the east gym also has been 
retrofitted with these systems. Our elevators are also fit with the INI systems. We have the north building, some of the east building, and the central building still to go. I'm Steve Schantz. I'm the athletic director here at Sandberg High School. One of the improvements we've had are we've gotten brand new bleachers put into our pool. They replace old wood bleachers with brand new metal bleachers with nice uh, individual plastic seat on top of it. Just enhances the entire pool area and I think will provide a great experience once we're able to have spectators back in our pool. Another improvement we've had is our softball field. We've made massive improvements to the field. We have brand new dugouts, uh, 40 foot netting, storage areas next to each dugout, as well as a brand new press box that we're very excited about. I think the improvements we've made with this field really enhances the field, matches the quality of our softball program. We think our field now will be able to host sectionals, maybe even super sectionals in the IHSA State Series, so we're very excited to do that and provide that opportunity for our student athletes. Hello, my name is Greg Gardner, assistant principal of our co-curriculars and building facilities here at Carl Sandburg High School. And one of the most exciting projects we had this summer was the transformation of our sports marketing classroom into an eSports arena. So we've added several new computers, some gaming PCs. This is gonna help our business sports marketing class not only learn how to market the athletics that we know of, but one of the fastest growing industries, which is eSports. Our students in the class are going to learn how to broadcast and produce and record and shoutcast our eSports tournaments as well as how to promote our athletic events. We're really excited for this opportunity and we know that the class is gonna benefit as well as the 100 students who are in our eSports co-curricular activity after school. Very excited for this groundbreaking program to take off and be one of the best in the state of Illinois in terms of competitive eSports. Hi, I'm Andy D. Crane, head dean of students here at Carl Sandburg High School. For the dean's office, the biggest improvement over the summer was the installation of about 200 cameras in and around our campus. These are going to help us keep our students and staff safe before, during, and after school, as well as deter any negative behaviors that may occur during the day. Excited to be able to share with all of you a beautification project that is taking place at Sandburg this November and was a generous donation from our class of 2020. So we will be updating our main staircase that goes from the Commons up to the Central Building and the Media Center to have positive quotes and messages. Really excited about this generous gift from class of 2020 and really think that it, think that it enhances our building from a beautification standpoint and just brings positive messages uh, that we talk about within our elite daily culture. So we have brand new field turf. They updated our stag charter logo onto the football field, uh, as well as updated the school colors in our end zones uh, and along the sidelines. I imagine almost all of our classes uh, that we offer throughout the school day being able to use it, our adventure ed classes, our people class, and any of our team sports classes, uh, even our strength and conditioning classes out here to do some body weight exercises. So in addition to a new field, we have a, a newly surfaced track. Any, any chance that we can, uh, we can take to get out here, uh, as long as there's not snow on the ground, I can see clubs, activities, sports being out here. Um, using these using these uh, beautiful new facilities. Two years ago in our social studies department, we, we did our water project where we raised over $10,000 um, and, and we walked on the turf and I can anticipate things like that um, coming about again and, and having these nice facilities um, make that possible. I'm standing in front of the state-of-the-art press box on top of the new dugouts that were given to us by the um, Board of Education and the Building and Finance Committee. This will be our softball programs. This would be both the varsity and the JV teams. Uh, they play here during the, during the season. So the press that come out to our games are the Southtown Star, and we also get members from the uh, area papers like the Patch, etc. We have a lot of fans that are sitting close, as you can see from our, our bleachers, and also the dugouts are close to the field, um, and the netting that has been provided with this new construction is going to guarantee the safety of the student athletes and coaches. 
We are really excited about our new camera system here at Stag High School. We were able to obtain 350 camera views this summer, and that's a combination of the interior of the building as well as the exterior uh, of the building outside on the campus. We were able to upgrade a lot of our vantage points here at Stag. Uh, currently, we have views on all of the entrances into the building, as well as maximizing hallway movement, and we are also able to obtain a really good grasp of where students are in the building as well as when they're outside leaving campus and entering the building as well. The priority at Stag High School will always be the safety of our students, our staff, and the community when they're on campus. Uh, this camera system truly maximizes the security protocols and gives us optimal security for Stag High School. The updates to the nursing mother's room are very exciting, I think, to me and a lot of other staff members here. Um, this was a great collaboration um, between um, some staff members and then our administration in terms of making sure that we not only were up to code in terms of the, the new laws for, for nursing spaces for mothers, but also I think our building did a really great job of even going above and beyond to make sure that mothers that are returning to work um, and still wanting to nurse or choosing to nurse um, have a good, safe, clean, and really comfortable space to do that, um, which I think is wonderful. So some of the changes to the room um, that help ease the transition and, and make it different from what it was before is just the comfort and the centralized location. It's such a great location in the building. Um, it's so central to where everybody is, so you don't feel like no matter where you are in the building, you're... And then the fact that it's really private, um, it's, they've done a lot. I, I really appreciate just making sure it's private, it's comfortable, um, you have a nice space to sit in. Again, that transition back into your day um, doesn't take so much time where you feel like you're not able to keep up with responsibilities as a teacher as well. This summer, Stag High School began the first of a multi-phase redesign of the Media Center. We were able to repurpose open space for student and staff use in the form of needed classrooms. Given the proximity these classrooms have to the Media Center, we are able to schedule our teachers of blended courses in these spaces, which allow for student flexibility in their day and able to access resources. The new roofing system was installed on the building we're standing in right now. It's our 600-700 building, um, essentially the northernmost building on Stag High School. It was one of our capital investments here at Stag High School. And um, what it was was the installation of a fluid applied rubberized roofing membrane. Um, it's over 63,000 square feet of a fire rated, multi-layered, fiber reinforced roofing system that is absolutely seamless. So there's no opportunity for the seams to separate causing future leaks. Well, certainly with maintenance, um, reducing the opportunity for roof leaks is huge. Um, and the, I think the best part about it um, was that none of the existing roofing material needed to be removed. It reduced the amount of waste that otherwise would have been generated by a roofing project like this um, that would have otherwise ended up in a landfill. As a dean, one of the most important features that we have added on over the summer is that we have had over 150 cameras added both internally and externally. This is meant not only to deter behaviors, but also to improve campus safety. I'm here to talk about the, the new roof and the uh, lighting that was installed in the camp classroom. All the classrooms in the north building were retrofitted from fluorescent to LED lighting with motion control sensors. It makes it easier for the teachers to dim down a room when they want to use an LCD projector. And if there's any inactivity, the lights turn themselves off. The roof is a, is a brand new membrane that was uh, installed on the south building only. All roof leaks were repaired previously. And then a, a coating of, of, mem of a white membrane was installed over that to seal the south building. We're, we're super excited about the uh, uh, renovations to our stadium field and track. We started this process last year together with my colleagues at uh, Sandberg and Stag. It surpassed all our expectations. It looks amazing out there. We added a lot of color around the, the numerals uh, as well as we colored the, the end zones. We included our lacrosse lines finally for lacrosse out there. 
The track looks great. It's so soft. Uh, we had our football team out there the other day training on there. They loved it. It looks amazing. It's, it's so fresh, so new, and it's going to be just really exciting to host our first football game and soccer game uh, later this year. We've been working on beautification projects here at Andrew High School for a lot of years, and this year we're especially excited about one that we've done on our second floor. It is a, a mural of all kinds of students, representative of our entire student body, doing the things that they love best. Sports, classroom, activities, clubs, being together, service projects, you name it, it's on the mural. We're excited to have it, and it was actually donated by the class of 2020 and it also aligns with one of our equity team goals for this year, which is making sure that the physical plant of the building is more representative of our entire student body. And we think it does just that. Yeah, yeah. And, it, it, and it, yeah, they're beautiful. And I think uh, we're just good to share. You know, all three. I know it takes some time, but I think it was important to show the work that we've done. Yeah. We we kept Dave busy, so yeah. Uh, thank you, Dave. Uh, Do you have anything else you wanted to add? No, uh, that that should be it for me. The, um, I, I I just like the fact you can see all the views from the the drone that Reese has. I think it gives a, a whole new look, but you really can't see when you walk on it. Thanks, Dave. Okay, great, thank you, Dave. Oh, good work. All right. Uh, the next uh, the um, policies for first reading. Right. And on page uh, fifteen fifty nine, there are no policies. They're about student yeah. service, education, and building finance. And it's committee for our legal language legal language updates that are presented tonight, but at first reading on display. So these are important uh, readings, so that can be <laughs> Yes. The most school board approved the first reading of public display of board policy 7 100, 7 300, 6 300, 6 310, 6 340, 490, 480, 4150. Second. Okay, motion made by Member <laughs> Sullivan. Very nice, by the way. And seconded by Member Murphy Peterson to the policies for first reading. Once again, these are first reading, so all we need is a voice vote. So all in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay, motion passes. Okay. And then go to the uh, motion of the executive session, starting with motion number two. I'm not sure what that is. I guess you do now. Dave Dave's got it. Motion two. Motion two. I move the uh, that the school board approve pers uh, personnel action, including staff co curriculars, licensed staff employment, leaves of absences, resignations, and retirements, board staff employment, leaves of absences, resignation, and retirement. Okay, motion made by Member O'Connor, seconded by Member Dahl. Personnel action, let's vote. Yes. 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 Motion passes. Uh, as to number three, I move the school board approve the out of school suspension for the period. For the period of November 1st, 2020 through December 4th, 2020. Second. Motion by Member O'Connor, seconded by Member Gracias, who will approve the current suspension report. Let's vote. Yes. 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 I move that the school board approve the settlement agreement with former student SA20 03 to resolve the claim for alleged personnel, personal injuries as presented. Second. Motion made by Member O'Connor, seconded by Mr. Dahl, to approve 
in the settlement agreement. Oh. Yes. 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 Um, we continue to work with the um, uh, CCDPH, uh, not state, but the CCDPH, and we're meeting with them tomorrow when we get different things. Um, as far as state concerned, the veto session has been canceled, and we're not sure what's going to happen in January with the new General Assembly. We plan on going down there um, once they are allowed, uh, allowing us to visit them in Springfield. Uh, so really, not much to say right now. I think we're all kind of holding our breath for the General Assembly that takes off in January. Um, we'll see with the Speaker of the Speaker of the House, the President of the Senate. You know, there's elections at that all the time. So we are, uh, Mr. Gracias is about the scope. We are not doing what's going on in the field. Do you agree with this? Really, is a whole thing. Just to share with this. Well, he used the word over her. Yes. Mm -hmm. And I'm not sure. I mean, that's what his words, not mine. Yep. That's what we'll hurt. Yeah. We'll learn the lesson and pass the class. That's all I have. Okay. Uh, then at this time, we'll uh, mess with the board comments. And this time, I'm going to start with number doll. <laughs> Change it up a bit. Well, I just want to wish our students and our, our faculty and our families uh, happy holidays. There are numerous holidays that will be coming up in the next couple of weeks. Regardless of how you uh, celebrate your holidays, we wish you the best. And we look forward to a better 2021. Uh, they uh, be able to resume something that looks a little more normal sooner than later. So, uh, happy holidays. Okay. I uh, just want to echo what uh, what Sue just said. I want to wish everybody uh, a great holiday season. Uh, all my fellow board members, the administration, teachers, um, all the hard workers that uh, work for our district. I want to just extend uh, our appreciation for everything they've done all year long under the most trying of circumstances. I also look forward to 2021. Can't get much worse. Yeah, Although, so, uh, keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> So 2020, right? It's going to be remembered in a lot of different ways by a lot of different people. I really hope that it's remembered more closely by our students' comments tonight. Their ability to adapt, their ability to persevere in a very trying time is truly impressive. Happy holidays, everybody. Yeah, I'm just going to echo what everybody else said. When, when Sue said resume, I focus on the Zoom part. I'm sick of Zoom. Um, <laughs> yeah, we really want to. We really want to get the students back in school. We want to make sure there's a safe working environment for employees and staff. Um, we're all rooting for this thing to be over sooner rather than later. And you know, we need to get these students involved with the co-curricular activities. Um, you know, the data shows that the more successful uh, our students are, they're the ones that are involved. And it's hard to be involved, but. Again, to what Mike and Dave and Sue said, everyone's being really creative. Like I said before, we had lengthy student reports, which means they're doing the best they can. And we're really proud of everybody. To, to really just, I know everybody is trying the best they can. It's really heartwarming that, that they're doing that. So with that being said, I wish everybody here and, and everyone that's, that's watching us uh, a happy holiday, and, uh, happy and safe holiday season. And you know, here's to 2021 being a lot better. Okay. Uh, well, I'll echo everyone else because everyone already said everything. Um, I'd like to add that um, I'm immensely grateful, actually, for um, all the people here um, that work really hard and make difficult decisions and put in a lot of extra time. Our administrators, our, our faculty, our students, I mean, like Matt said, I mean, our students are going above and beyond. They're going outside of the, of the school day and, and working in the community and helping people. And that's what this is all about. Um, who knows what 21... 2021 will hold, but um, I'm just grateful that we have uh, such a great district 
all encompassing families, everybody that acknowledges that this is a difficult time and just kind of pivots and does the right thing. So happy holidays and um, here's to a better 2021. Listen, I'm going to piggyback on what Kate just said. I feel the same way. I'm so grateful to the staff, the administration, the teachers, the students, the entire Peace Party community really pulled together in a much better time to work together to bring some sort of educational experience and help to our community members. And I'm really proud of that. Um, this was a rough year uh, on many, many levels. and I'm just very proud of the 30 and how we stood together to weather the situation. I truly hope 2021 uh, comes in uh, quickly and it will be much better and more positive year. And that we can all rejoice that we survived 2020. Thank you, Gordon. Kind of your, your ending, but I would just also like to really. To be able to work with the community, the staff, the teachers, uh, it starts with the board, the board of education, you know, it's been a tough semester. 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 We've been nine months now. You know, we've been working with this, and it's been tough. And I've been and, uh, overcome sometimes by the, the passion and compassion that really seen by the majority. Our students and staff and community. They know that you know the board is uh, elected by volunteer grade. The volunteer and elected position, we work very hard uh, to represent all of us. And I appreciate that. Uh, our teachers and employees have learned just a whole new way of educating each students and a whole new platform. And they've done an outstanding job of support staff, CVS teachers, our custodians, our district office staff. Uh, you know, have all realized the focus is the one thing that the word education is here for our kids, regardless of the platform, regardless of the degree. That's what we have to be here for. And I know 2021 is better because it can't be. It's going to be better. Our goal is to get our students and staff to safe environment back in. I just thank them. Thank you. Absolutely. And, and I just like to. Kind of, again, not for everyone, but uh, well, I think that as we look back on this year, the thing that, that makes me uh, very humble and proud of uh, being part of this district is that despite everything that has gone on, despite issues and concerns and, and whatever else is out there that everyone in this district was able to pull together and work together for that common goal which was to do good festivals and we see what's going on in a lot of other districts we see the problems a lot of other districts are having and yet we successfully been able to keep our kids in school for a good part of the semester now and as long as we want, of course not, because we have restrictions. But I think we're doing the best we can. We've had a great situation. We've been successful. I think it's because every one of us has worked hard despite all the outside influences and everything else, because we knew what our job was and we found it was. So I just want to say that I'm very proud to serve with all of you. Because everyone here exemplifies what it truly means to be a part of this group and to do what's best for the students. And no one can ask to serve with better So I thank everybody. So that includes staff, that includes you know, administration. Uh, this is just an incredible district. I say it over and over again. And I do hope that everyone, as Sue said, whatever holiday you celebrate, I hope that you have the best holiday you possibly can. And I, I truly, truly hope what I told our, our three uh, student speakers that come May this year, we will all be standing on stage and helping all of us personally each of our, of our great students. Because if nothing else, they deserve that. And I hope that we can get there.
there. So thank you all, and uh, we will see you in January. Uh, so I'd like to ask my motion to adjourn, please. So motion. Second. Okay, motion made by Member Murphy Peterson, seconded by Member Gracias to adjourn. Can I get a vote, please? Yes. 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 We are adjourned for 2020 at 8.09 p.m. Thank you.